Cheryl, thank you for joining me. Here we are on Thursday, the 26th of March, and I wanted to catch up to hear a little bit about what's happening in your community, in uh, the two communities that you cover with Tap Into, Verona and Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Well, listen, first of all, how are you doing? How are your family members doing? And, and what do you see outside your window in your neighborhood? What I see outside my window is nothing. Um, I'm on a dead end street, so there's very little traffic. And I see the same people walking up and down, um, their dogs up and down the street. Uh, very, very little activity outside my window. And I haven't been out much in my town, because of course we're not supposed to be. But with little I've gone out, it's pretty um, dead. There's not a lot of activity going on. Everybody's inside like they're supposed to be. Although we do get obviously a lot of news um, from the towns, uh, the townships and um, the state, various ways we're getting. Mostly, I, I would say Facebook has probably been our easiest way to keep in touch with everyone. And probably everybody's experiencing that at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but everybody doesn't use Facebook. So I think that's the reason why I tap into can really fill, fill a void. And we've been having excellent uh, traffic since this whole thing. People are really looking to us for getting their only news source. Let me ask a little bit more broadly about Verona and Cedar Grove. Tell me a little bit about the two towns. How are things going? Uh, I think at this point we've had about 13 people tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, we do have one grocery store in our town. I have been to that grocery store. I have to say in the beginning, I was uh, a little more blase about, um, as a microbiologist and as a scientist, uh, well, maybe because I'm a scientist, you know, you, you practice better hygiene maybe than most in general. Let me interrupt uh, you for a second, um, because <laughs> along with uh, owning and managing a, a TAP franchise, you do have this other career. Would you mind telling me about that? <laughs> so in addition to um, owning TAP Into, I do clinical research in oncology right now. I'm currently working on mostly phase ones, some phase threes, where we collect data um, to take to the FDA in order to get drugs approved. I guess I was uh, less um, worried about this, but obviously it's very funny being isolated in my house for this past week. I have gotten more scared <laughs> as I go to the, to the grocery <laughs> store rather than less scared. I guess as it, as it becomes apparent that it's in my town and that my chances of going out and having someone else who's contacted somebody else in my town being in that grocery store up a little bit higher than, um, I, I guess I got a little more scared than I was uh, in the beginning. So we've been pretty much self-isolating and staying at home other than maybe picking up some um, takeout food. I have gone into the grocery store, but I spend like no time in there. Just go in, get as little as I can and move on. It's been interesting because I wasn't so scared and I've gotten more scared, hmm. which is weird. Let me dovetail on that concern that you, you're expressing. You know, do you think your community, your two communities that you cover, are they feeling that anxiety as well? Are they fear, is there a sense of fear out there, do you think? I think the people who are, I, I think as we're staying put, I feel for the people who have to go out and work. Our police officers, you know, the people, uh, my, my friend who's a nurse contacted me on Facebook and you know, she's been wearing the same mask for a week. Now she only works two days in the hospital, but still she shouldn't be having to wear the same mask for a week, putting her life at risk. And she's like, you know, I know I'm a, I'm a nurse, but, um, and that's my job, but still that, that gave me pause that our people who are out there on the front line really don't have the right, um, protective gear to help them and save them. So they're out there in danger. I feel for them. And I, I, I guess at this point now, I'm thinking that I'm doing my part. We're doing our part by just staying put. The less danger I'm putting anybody else in. So I, I feel like at least that's, that's 
me giving that is a sacrifice that is us all sacrificing in order to make it not spread any further and uh, i was thinking about this the other day at this is kind of off but um i was thinking last night that new york went through 9 11 and i was pregnant with my second son during 9 11. um in fact i had him on the 26th of september i was very pregnant and uh i remember being i mean that was so intense and i feel a little bit like it, the same thing honestly um i i kind of since i was so pregnant was stuck inside my house too with 9 11 there was so much news going on but being so close to new york and where it happened where the majority of it happened and then also where the, this seems to be the epicenter now for the coronavirus just sort of brought back that to me which wasn't a happy memory either so um I, I, it's it's been a little bit of an adjustment. Um, how have you experienced the crisis through the TAP platform? You know, there's obviously more viewership and there's a connectivity to the community. Tell me a little bit about how you're seeing that. Well, it's a struggle to try to keep up with um, without going out, really, without going out of the house too mm. much, keeping up with um, the getting the vital news to the community so it's been a little bit of a struggle in that fashion and trying to help the businesses the local businesses um as much as possible trying to let people know if they do want to get takeout where they can go to get takeout and who's open and who's not um it's just been it's it's been a little challenging but i think we're doing the best that we can by uh, keeping in touch with the people that we need to keep in touch with. The town's been fantastic. The mayor's been fantastic. Um, you know, people have been very good about reaching out and helping us to connect everyone. I shudder to think how we would all be if we didn't have tap into as a source right now. Um, because there's print would help us not at all. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we're all stuck in our homes. The internet is one of our only ways to stay connected. And the fact that we can provide that connectivity for our community and give them all this vital news, is, that's what keeps me going. It's hard, but you know, I think it's a, such a service that I need to provide to my community. Well, I appreciate you taking time to join me to talk about this. Would you like to use a little crystal ball and, and just tell me where you think things are going in the next couple of weeks, or maybe even how we're going to come out of this as a, as a tap manager and owner? Where do you see all of this going? Unfortunately, I was hoping that it was going to end a little faster than I, I, I really do believe that this will take us some time to work out of. I actually foresee that we'll be quarantined for quite a while. Um, I'm hating it, really hating it, but how long till we get out of it and what, what do I see us getting out of it? I think it's going to make us a little stronger, hopefully as a community, because, uh, I do see us working together. Businesses are trying to work together, to strengthen each other up and, um, shore each other up. Everybody's not going to survive. That's unfortunate. Um, but you know, this is going to be a hard hit. So we'll be having to build up together after. Well, thanks again for joining me. Please stay safe and healthy and quarantined. Don't go too stir crazy. And uh, we'll catch up again like this very soon.